Hey Globe Gang, it's Maisha and welcome back to the Globe's Beauty Closet for another Big Beauty Tuesday. We've been on hiatus, but we are back for Black History Month, and I cannot think of a better way to kick off Black History Month than with this. This is the African Lookbook, uh, a visual history of 100 years of African women. And I actually received it uh, for another silo that I happen to manage here at The Root, which is It's Lit, which is our literary content and podcast. Get into that as well, please. But, you know, occasionally my worlds collide, and uh, this book, is really incredible because you know when we think about African women historically often it's through this lens it's like kind of national geographic lens that is very flattening not just to black female bodies but also to what we know to be a huge and diverse and you know culturally rich continent um, that has had and continues to have obviously looking at you Beyonce uh, this incredible influence on our style and McKinley has done that and and brought it to the fore in terms of you know really presenting her own collection that she's been building for decades and she was gracious enough to come here today and talk to us about it so the African lookbook how did this project like what was the genesis of this I wrote a book about the indigo trade in West Africa. When I was doing the research for that, I was trying to look for the earliest images of textiles. And so I started turning to the earliest photography, which started around 1865 with African studios and European studios on the continent. And I just became obsessed with it. And then roughly 10 years later, Seydou Keita and Malik Sidibe became art world sensations. I was saying, okay, I have similar photos at home, and what does it mean for these things to be now become art objects? It made me more and more interested in finding out what this whole thing was about and why these images had been so hidden to us in the West. To your point, it's it's like the Basquiat phenomenon, right? They've been there the whole time, and all of a sudden it's like everywhere and ubiquitous, and and it's amazing, and we deserve that kind of recognition. But it is also, you know, what I love about what you did here is that it feels very for us. And also that you're focusing on women and the way women have been represented uh, in African photography because there is this sense of colonial porn that we've always seen African bodies very much echoes the way those same African bodies or similar African bodies were treated when they got here to the States. And so why was it so important for you to like give us this different lens? If we look past what's obvious and is disturbing, there's another narrative that the sitter is telling us. And so what is that narrative? What is that woman telling us? If we strip away the camera and the, the white gaze, I don't think we can really understand the other images unless we investigate the whole thing. So, I entirely agree. I do. Yeah. I, and I say that as somebody who has both of those types of images in my own home, you know? Um, some One that I brought home from South Africa and is very much like, the kind of like woman warrior. Is it objectifying? Is it, you know, and I'm looking at her gaze. It was her gaze that I think, you know, really caught me. That's something that's really, that's valid. And that you and I have something in common, you know, you didn't have to look far for these images. These are from the McKinley collection. How did this even begin? It really started, I, uh, just after graduate school, I started traveling to West Africa pretty regularly, yearly or semi-yearly. And people would give photographs as little parting gifts. You'd make it like a casual friend or a close friend. And when you were leaving, they would give you a photo. And photos are costly on the continent. They were really intentional gifts. Someone would spend money and dress up and really make it an, it an occasion. So the photos were very dear. They felt really precious to me. And I just, I kept them. And then it, it began to be a bigger kind of a project, but it really kind of started there. As somebody who has spent a lot of time um, in West Africa in particular, um, which, you know, we know was the nexus of, you know, the slave trades. Mm -hmm. um, what do you make of that? What do you make of this now, I guess, popularity or, you know, marketing of, of African culture to Americans now? You know, finally, we have like a critical, critical mass of African people living here in the U.S. So it is very exciting. But then in, I think in popular culture, there's another kind of tricky thing going on. Yeah. <laughs> Even in terms of the photographs, you can see how Malik Sidibe, the that kind of aesthetic of the studio has infiltrated the fashion world, definitely been appropriated. And in some ways, some of it's very exciting, very beautiful work and other bits of it are a little unsettling. 
And, and, you know, it's kind of like, who do you to pass that torch to? And that, you know, it should be passed and we, we don't want to lose that. But I think we also want to be very careful to let it be what it is, which is yes for us, but also theirs. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that it's that appropriation appreciation line that we're always running into, which is, again, you know, I keep coming back to the book, I think is what's so powerful that you're offering us this perspective on that, mm -hmm. like how to process that information, I suppose, yeah. even appropriation of black female bodies. I feel like I'm a caretaker of the photos. A lot of them are taken from collections where they would sit as, you know, kind of private objects. And what I'm trying to do with my collection is to bring it closer to African artists in particular, and then um, to eventually to an institution where, you know, people would have access. In the meantime, we have this incredible book. There's the imagery, but you know, even though this is called the look book, I mean, this is this is a this is a narrative work. Like, there's you know, there's a lot of research, there's a lot of history, um, and I, I couldn't be more excited about it. But what would you like people to take away from this book? You know, greater engagement in this idea of who we are in relationship to the continent, more dialogue between continental Africans and and African Americans and Caribbean folks as well. I, you know, I'm a strong advocate for for closeness and contention at the same time. So I think we have a lot to hash out with each other and a lot like to learn that. and celebrate about each other. Closeness and contention. I like that. I think all the, you know, there's something to that. And I think it very well encapsulates um, both the discussion and the argument. Um, I love it. And I love what you did here. And thank you so much for offering it to us and offering your time to us. And... I can't wait to see more of the McKinley Collection. Thank you so much for the African Thank look. You. Thank you so right. much.